Hi, my name is Madeline Wolkin, and today I'm presenting a comparison of two methods for measuring efficacy of antimicrobial agents, a project designed by myself and Dr. James Hall at Our Lady of the Lake University. So when we started out on this project, we wanted to focus on two main areas of research, pharmacology and microbiology. And this led us to wanting to compare the efficacy of different antimicrobial agents, such as antibiotics or disinfectants, but soon we shifted our, our search to more um, antimicrobial susceptibility testing methods instead. And so what we came across was that we discovered this gold standard of antimicrobial susceptibility testing, which is called the broth microdilution method, shortened to BMD. And you can see that here in figure one. So the BMD method uses 96 wool plates read in a micro plate reader. And each of these 96 wells has a varying concentration of antimicrobial agent mixed with a microorganism. And once the optical density is read in this microplate reader, we can indirectly determine the amount of growth of microorganism in each of these wells, and then indirectly determine from there how much inhibition is being shown at different concentrations of antimicrobial agent on these microorganisms. And so in figure two, you can see our second method that we came across, which is commonly used in clinics and hospitals, which is the MTS method. It uses minimum inhibitory concentration test strips, also known as the MTS method. And these strips, you can see down in figure two, it has um, a logarithmic scale of different concentrations of antimicrobial agent. And so at the very bottom of the scale there, the lowest concentrations of antimicrobial agent and towards the top are the highest concentrations. So as you can see, this dark areas where there is um, an inhibition of growth of microorganism and all the lighter areas are where there is growth of microorganism. And so as you can see here, as the um, concentration of antimicrobial agent increases, the inhibition of microorganisms also um, increases as well. And so we wanted to find a way to compare these two different methods. And one of the ways we decided to compare them was using a dose response curve, which is commonly used in pharmacology. And so as you can see here, these two are um, sigmoid shaped curve, which is exactly what we we're expecting for this combination of microorganism and antimicrobial agent. Um, at these low concentrations, you can see that um, there wasn't any inhibition of growth for the BMD method, which is measured in um, optical density, or the MTS method, which is measured in zone of inhibition in centimeters. However, you can see that as the concentration increases, the inhibition of growth also increases with both methods, and they both have a nice plateau at the end, which just means that no matter how high the concentration gets after this, um, after this level, that there will be no more inhibition of growth than there already was. One thing to point out with this graph is that you can see with this blue line, the BMD method, there is an increase in an inhibition at a lower concentration than there is with the MTS method, which is showing that the BMD method is a lot more sensitive to these low concentrations of antimicrobial agent um, than is the MTS method. Okay, so here we have another way that we wanted to compare these um, two different methods is uh, using a one-to-one -one method comparison. So right here we have this one-to-one -one perfect line which would show um, a complete and perfect correspondence between the two methods. Um, so that would be the ideal relationship between the two. However, we have these points over here which lay, are leading us to determine that at low concentrations of antimicrobial agent, the BMD method is a lot more sensitive, as we stated earlier, um, to these um, concentrations than is the MTS method. And that's why you can see that there is inhibition um, here which in optical density, which is the BMD method, but there is an inhibition being shown as much in, with the MTS method used using um, zone of inhibition as the measurement. However, at these higher concentrations of antimicrobial agent, they're much closer to the one-to-one -one line, which is showing that at high concentrations of these antimicrobial agents, there is a much more equal sensitivity between the two methods. So just um, to wrap everything up and to give some conclusions, both methods had great dose response curves, which were exactly what we were um, expecting out of these, a, a dose related progressive effect. And they were both sensitive to inhibition of growth at high concentrations of antimicrobial agents. However, the BMD method was much more sensitive to inhibition of growth at low concentrations, um, and it had less variability between, between replicates. It also is most likely a much cheaper method than buying the MTS 
method strips. And so, however, the MTS method had pros as well. It had a lot fewer steps in the procedure. It was less time consuming. It had a quicker reading of results. And that's why these are great in clinics and hospitals when you really just need to know the lowest dose you can give to treat an infection. However, the BMD method, if you're needing to search and learn about the um, effects of low concentrations of antimicrobial agents, such as in an educational or research um, environment, then the BMD method might be the best path for you to take. So it really just depends on um, the situation you're in, and they both have great things about them. So this was our comparison on these two different methods, and um, I hope you had a great time listening. Thank you so much.